Thank you for joining today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. And thank you for having a desire to be your best at work and helping your organization achieve success. This podcast focuses on tactical actions to improve workplace culture. And these actions align to our nine principles for organizational excellence. Over the past several episodes, we've spent time on human performance. We've focused on building an emotional bank account with our employees and describing varying performance levels along a performance curve. Remember, about 20 to 30 percent of our workforce are high performers, 60 to 70 percent are solid performers, and 10 to 20 percent are low performers. We've focused on ways to engage in coaching conversations with high and solid performers, and next week we'll end the series of episodes with how to have low performer conversations. Before we do, and as an introduction to managing lower performers, let's focus on how the varying human performance levels affect the overall organizational results. Also, let's address how leaders have an important role in managing performance to keep those results moving in a positive direction. When we work and lead with an improvement mindset, our goal is to move organizational performance up and to have a consistency of individual performance to help us achieve the goal. In other words, we tighten the performance curve so that we have higher performance with less variation. As employee performance improves, so does our organizational performance. Our end goal is to attain and sustain high-performing results and to continue to grow. That sounds so easy, doesn't it? Ah, but it's not. You know, it's, it's one of the most difficult things to do. We have to determine where our employees fall along the performance curve so that we know how to lead them and we know how to coach them to succeed. We also have to know how to manage low performers, you know, to either move them up or to move them out of the organization. As you recall from a past episode, we provide our employees with every opportunity to be successful. And at the end of the day, our employees choose to improve or not. If they don't make a positive choice, the leader has to act. To learn more about how to navigate our way with our employees, we'll focus on why organizations hit a performance wall. Remember, about 20 to 30 percent of people in an organization are high performers, 60 to 70 percent are solid performers, and 10 to 20 percent are low performers. As a leader, our goal is to, if we remember, we recruit our high performers and give them room to perform, coach and support solid performers, and provide direction to and coach low performers, giving them every opportunity to be successful. So let's refresh our memory on what we can expect from high, solid, and low performers. Remember, high performers want to achieve and have a relentless drive to succeed. When we introduce something new to them, they're the first to take on the challenge and improve their performance quickly. Solid performers look at the high performer to see, you know, what right looks like. They usually improve their performance once they've been taught and coached. They need to feel comfortable with a change. They, too, want to be successful and for all the right reasons. And in many cases, they are. In fact, our solid performers can be the glue that holds our organizations together. The low performers are slow to improve. They need more direction, clearly defined expectations, and more connection during their independent and individual improvement cycle. With direct coaching, some may choose to change their behaviors, and that's good when they do. And others may not choose to make the needed changes, and they just continue to work with poor skills and low will. Sometimes low performers have been living in this world for so long it's difficult for them to change. They have to change their ways and tackle the challenges if they are to succeed. When we start down a path of continuous improvement, and we challenge our teams to achieve goals that stretch them to get better. As we start, the journey seems exciting to our high and solid performers. And the gap between the low and high performers is pretty much hidden. You know, the solid performers are a little nervous, but they're with us. So we're moving along. 
the critical mass of employees is improving and we're making gains. And about 80% of our employees are carrying the 20% for a while. At some point, the 80% no longer can or desire to carry the low performers. Some of the low performers are deciding to come along and as we always know, some are not. As we continue the journey and are well on our way, the lift gets more difficult because we're pushing for that top tier performance. Now the gap between low performers and everyone else starts to become obvious. At the beginning of our journey, the gap was uncomfortable, but it didn't necessarily affect performance. Farther into the journey, the gap between the lows, who still choose to be low, and the solid and high performers is intolerable. About this time, the high performers are getting really frustrated because they know what type of performance is expected. And they see people not delivering, and they see they are allowed to continue with no consequences. They see low performers behaving as usual, and their behaviors are not aligned with the organizational values. The solid performers are actually in the same boat now, but something else is going on for them. They're starting to be targeted by the 10%. These low performers don't want the organization to change. They've been able to survive with the new changes, yet they see their laissez-faire work life being jeopardized. As team members, just when you think it can't get worse, it does. The low performers get more aggressive and louder. They just become much more apparent in our organizations. And we're screaming inside, when's this going to stop? We're hoping we awake one day and the low performers quit or the leaders at least fired them. The high performers value the changes in the organizations and have a desire to improve and to work for a high performing organization. And the low performers last on to some key solid performers. And those on the low to solid performing fence sometimes make the wrong choice. They go backwards to the low performer. So these low performers befriend them so that they can come over to that other side. Okay, so leaders, here's our opportunity to reflect. How many times have we transitioned a low performer from our organization and our team has told us we went too fast? Here's our reality. As leaders build the right foundation to move the organization results and engage employees to travel down that improvement path, some people come with us and some people will not. All the while, everyone in the organization sees what's going on. And they're looking to us as leaders to offer solutions. Our organization is hitting the wall. High performers are getting tired of carrying people they thought would be dealt with, and they lose their energy. And you know what? They back off a bit. They are still really, really good, but they've lost their edge and motivation. They don't see the leaders living the organizational values. They know that their hands are tied when they're working in an environment when someone they work with has a negative attitude, and that makes their work environment extremely miserable. They silently beg for leaders to address poor performance so they can keep their excitement and motivation, and the leader never does. The solid performers follow the high performers, and high and solid performers begin to slide down that wall, and overall performance of the organization begins to decline. As I talk about hitting the wall to a group of leaders, I always ask, who are the only people who can do something about low performers and keep the organization from hitting the wall? (laughs) They look at me with this long face and they say, the leader. If we're hardwiring processes that build better work environments, yet we allow people to treat others with disrespect and not follow through with their promises, We're hurting our people and our organization. The logical thing for leaders to do is address the performance issue, right? But what can be a leader's tendency? See if this sounds familiar. A new solution is introduced. As leaders, we cheer on the new solution, trying to get people excited by letting them know this is the one solution that will make an all-time difference. We implement the solution and high performers surge, as they always do, and solid performers usually follow the high performers, and low performers talk about all the ways the solution 
will not work. They say things like, we've outlived other ideas, <laughs> we'll outlive this one. You know, or better yet, when an organization gets a new leader, the low performers pride themselves on outliving all the past leaders. And you guessed it, once again, leaders ignore the non-compliant and negative behaviors and the solution fails. And leaders tend to say, well, this one no longer works. It's just outlived its purpose. It's time to move on to a new idea. Ah, this is maddening for high performers and many solid performers as well. What's even more maddening is when leaders fail to tell their employees that the new initiative is dead. Employees are still trying to follow the prior eight initiatives as well as the new one. No one ever told them to stop because we killed it years ago. And here's the good yet difficult news. If we address performance issues as we travel down this improvement path, we have opportunities to get over the performance wall. If we address issues quickly enough, we might not have the backward slide. And remember from an earlier podcast episode, the best organizations operationalize values by putting standards of practice in place. You know, that is, our colleagues have defined the workplace expectations, what we expect of our leaders and employees when they come to work every day. Bottom line, the sooner we address performance issues, the less painful they are to the organization. High and solid performers don't have to feel the burden low performers place on them, and we keep positive momentum to achieve results. You know, at conferences, I get one common audience question that relates to this low performance issue, and the question is, how do I get everyone on board? Our job is not to get everyone on board, is it? It's getting the high and solid performers to come with us and giving the low performers an opportunity to choose to move up. We realize some people make a profession out of being unhappy. No matter what we do, it will never be good enough. Let's take a look at another disconnect between leaders and employees that can end in organizations hitting that wall. As I've mentioned in a prior podcast episode, we administer an employee engagement survey to our partner organizations. The common feedback from employees about leaders includes leaders not being fair. And when we ask leaders if they're fair, this is really, really funny to, to hear. They almost always say, yes, of course they're fair. And when we ask them to define fairness, they'll pinpoint things like scheduling, compensation, benefits, and a standardized performance evaluation system. And then we talk to employees and we ask the same question. Uh, is their leader fair? You know what? They don't mention the same things. They tend to focus fairness on workplace expectations and consistency of practices applied to a team. Here's what's crazy to think about. As leaders, we know we are not applying consistent practices. We know when we're not doing that. It doesn't feel good to us, and it seems like it will feel even worse to address negativity or non-compliant behavior in the workplace head on. When I talk with aspiring leaders, you know, it's at this point I ask, are you sure you want to be a leader? Because if you do, you have this awesome responsibility that can determine whether or not an organization makes it over the wall to achieve or slide and fall. Now I want to spend my last few minutes focusing on how does this wall work when we have a low performer on the executive team. The organizational tolerance is lower and the wall appears very quickly. The senior executive is the only person who can do something about a low-performing executive team member. Time is precious and unforgiving for the senior executive. I've heard senior executives say something like this, she's not the best with people, but she knows how to run the operations to keep things moving. And what that senior executive is saying is this, it's okay for this executive team member to get things done on the backs of our people with little or no care concern for their well-being. Well, bottom line, that's just simply not acceptable and not representative of any organization that's striving for excellence. The senior executive has to make a difficult decision to transition an executive team member from the team if that individual chooses not to change. 
our teams depend on us as leaders to support a work environment that gives every opportunity for all of us to excel. And they look to senior leadership to model high performance expectations. They watch to see if we do what we expect others to do. They listen to what we say and how we say it. And they watch to see if we do what we say we will do when we'll do it. I've seen too many senior leaders over the years excuse themselves from the organizational expectations. Shoot, as leaders, we've all done that a time or two. Here's what I've found. If something is too difficult to follow, let's ask ourselves, does the rule or expectation make sense? If it doesn't, and we don't see a need to align our behavior to the expectation, then for goodness sakes, let's not expect others to do it either. If the expectation is important and we are not in compliance, then we need to quickly change our behavior as a leader. In some instances, we may need to apologize to our team for not being in line with the expectation. As I mentioned earlier, when we work and lead with an improvement mindset, our goal is to move organizational performance up and to have consistency of individual performance to help us achieve the goal. Remember this. In other words, we tighten the performance curve so that we have higher performance with less variation. That's how we keep from hitting the wall. As employee performance improves, so does our organizational performance. And our end goal is to attain and sustain high performance and to continue to grow. It's a lot to take in because when we choose to be a leader, we have to make difficult yet meaningful decisions. And when we choose to be high and solid performers, we commit to always knowing we can get better. And we need good leaders who are our great coaches to help us cross the finish line and have one winning season after another. This week, think about a time when you've been a high, solid, or low performer and your organization hit the wall. How did your behavior affect the impact of the hit? And what one or two actions can you take to get better as a leader or as a valuable team member working in unison with your peers? In my lifetime, I've lived in all three worlds at one time or another. I don't know about you, but I've made a firm commitment to never live in the low-performing world. And as a leader, to do my job so that my team doesn't have to live with low-performing teammates. They not only deserve that, they can hold me to my word. Thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. I look forward to connecting with you on our next podcast episode where we will focus on low performer conversations. We've worked through high and solid performer conversations and next week we'll talk about how we can do the right thing for the majority of our team members address low performers. Have a great week.